shock for me when I got diagnosed as autistic, and I'm sure many other autistic folk here can relate to this as well, was just kind of dealing with people's assumptions, prejudices, stereotypes, and really negative kind of treatment and framing of, of autism and also disabilities more widely. People kind of made it out as if it was a massive tragedy and something I should be ashamed of and hide and, and all these other things. Whereas I was like super happy and like amazing, like ecstatic about it. <laughs> and like, I was like, Wee! and like, they really like killed my buzz, like not loads, but it definitely had an impact on me where I was just like, what are you talking about? And it kind of shows the state of our approach to disability as a society as well, um, which is far too negative. Um, and it comes from like eugenic thinking and I'll come on to that later. It really does need to change for multiple reasons. A lot of people would see disability as a negative thing, whereas it's much more complicated and nuanced and it's hugely varied. Again, not to romanticize them, but there's variety there where it's not just seen as a, you know, so-called negative thing. That really needs to be mainstreamed, that kind of knowledge that this is not a problem. But yes, again, I'm not trying to make it sound easy. And again, we have a lot of different perspectives in the disability community. In light of that, we need that reflected in how the mainstream treats these experiences. We need to listen and prioritise and centralise these experiences. And that's how we're going to learn and move forward. Here are some examples of the kind of treatment I get when sometimes when people find out that I'm autistic. Obviously, I've mentioned that people frame it quite negatively. I also got a text from my siblings saying, I'm sorry to hear about the health news when I found out that I was autistic, as if I was like seriously ill when I was like, like off the moon, is that the expression? I was like super happy about it. So get to get this text, I was like, what? <laughs> and they sent me like this link to this really problematic documentary about like people who are autistic and trying to cure autism. And it was really horrible. And I was like, okay, yeah, that like really hurt me. <laughs> and I don't think it's unusual, again, that people experience and kind of treat autism as a tragedy. Um, whereas I personally don't feel that it's the case for like, not how I experience it. I know there's lots of other autistic folk who, who don't experience it like that. Some of us do experience it like that. Um, and I'm not trying to take that away from people and I'm not trying to, it is very difficult being autistic, but in my experience, for me, that is largely to do with how society treats us. And that's, you know, that's what I'm talking about right now. I, I've seen people kind of assume that I like can't really communicate very well. Um, and again, not that these things are very, these things are not simple <laughs> to articulate, which I guess shows that it's not very really easy to like summarize communication, like what is good communication. A lot of the time, the stereotypes are kind of the opposite of what is, you know, the true form of reality. A lot of us are amazing at communication. Yeah, obviously there's like different levels of needs and some of us are non-verbal, but it doesn't mean that those people can't communicate. Like, in fact, there's, there's different ways um, non-verbal autistic people can communicate and there's different methods and tools as well that that help and a lot of time non-verbal people can communicate like very effectively through these different means and ways so I think it's really about changing what we think is so-called effective communication and ways of like diversifying communication as well I don't think neurotypicals or neurotypical culture is like the epitome of good communication I think it's actually pretty terrible <laughs> when I like look at how people are communicating and I'm like, okay, this is strange. I think another very common and really messed up aimless thing that I've heard quite a lot is, uh, which is very common, is like people assuming that you are a burden on other people and that you are a burden to like your partner and, and things like that. And there's that, there's a whole area there about disability and sexuality and, you know, us being burdens. It's a huge like kind of paradox box. But I've had people be like talking about my partner as if like, oh, poor him <laughs> or like, oh, he must be so patient, like just because I'm an autistic person and having like zero understanding of like my relationship and my kind of private life. And, you know, it's you really don't know what you're talking about. And it's just a really ableist trope. How do you quantify any of this stuff? It's just like you don't know how much labor either of us does for the other person or you know, with any other relationship as well. And it's not like neurotypicals on a lot of labor, you know, assuming that my partner and other people that I love and, and you know, I'm in relationship with as, as friends or whatever else, like, you don't know you do like any of those things. And, um, you know, the very fact that like, if there's a power dynamic difference, like say, say, you know, my partner's a man and I'm not, you know, you could say that that's like a lot of labor, like having that power difference. 
and uh, managing that in a relationship and any kind of couple that's like a mixed race couple or you know mixed like uh, cis and trans couple it's just like you it's just such an assumption that just because someone's disabled or neurodiverse or autistic that they're a burden it could be the other way around it could be like you know people are burdens to each other on different days i don't know it's just a bit like fucking insulting my partner is privileged to be with me as i am to be with him and the same with other people who are disabled and not disabled in relationships like both people are just as privileged to be with each other or not with each other whatever and like it's a fucking like honor to be with me and the same with to be in friendship with me in the same way that it's an honor to be with my partner and with my friends and so on and so forth it's just like who the fuck do you think you are devaluing people in relationship to each other because of like disability and your assumptions around that being abandoned or not like it just really doesn't translate at all so people need to stop doing that <laughs> as a person who is not a cis man i just automatically do a, a ton of emotional labor generally speaking in my relationships with other people you know how does that how are we going to quantify that everyone like tell me um and like value that labor apparently i'm like a limitless resource that no one can like acknowledge and like respect for for that for that kind of energy that i express like, i'm talking about like when these comments happen it's just like what are you on mate yeah anyway so out to all the disabled people it's a fucking privilege to know disabled people and you know whatever capacity you're in relationship with them fucking respect that you're not doing them a favor okay you're not at all um especially if you got that kind of attitude <laughs> so so yeah go us i also have this experience of being framed as negative and a lot of people in in the autistic community are framed as negative by people and it's kind of ironic i think it's, it's partly to do because we're well what if what do even those things mean you know it's really not that simple firstly but secondly i think it's because we're direct and we you know it's it's a lot of us find it hard to lie a lot of us are just like bam like with what we feel or think about certain things and there's other people that seem to frame this as negative so that's really to do with them obviously i mean most of these things are to do well they are to do with the other person rather than the autistic people that they're talking to but i just think it's so ironic i just think okay so um let's take a with a question like how are you okay so if i answered that honestly like some people would frame that as like a negative answer because i mentioned that there were some struggles in there or whatever but i think like a much darker thing is being like yes i'm so fine like i'm just gonna stretch my face like this and say everything's fine even though i'm like terminally like ill and you know like everyone i love is like super depressed so i'm just gonna say everything's fine and like you know like that's just how we're gonna deal with things and obviously this is so much healthier and you know what i mean like i think that's way more negative and like darker and like horrible <laughs> and also like research shows like talking about like difficult things and like dark things or challenging things can actually help to transmute that and translate that stuff into better you know better emotions positive emotions that's part of why I, i'm honest about things because i'm like the facts show that actually this is the more positive you know positive thing to do again like this is kind of privileged information that i have access to in this case so i know a lot of this is just ignorance and like people are just yeah they're not trying to be horrible or whatever it's just kind of how the culture is but you can translate that to loads of parts of like your typical culture of like you know how lying is like normal and I don't know, you could do a whole comedy sketch about that stuff i'm sure i also had people treat me like i'm really stupid all of a sudden um like one of my neighbors was like when they found out that i was autistic they were just like acting like i couldn't do anything i remember they asked like the plumber to pass a message on to my partner in front of me and i was like i can do that and um also i was doing very kind of simple stuff with my phone i can't remember what it was they were just like oh yes you're doing very well and i'm just like oh god and again i know it's like about ignorance and you know ableism and blah blah blah, blah but it's still it's not very really easy to experience the more loving side of me the more agreeable side of me wants to be very like kind of you know loving compassionate and understanding and kind of forgiving about these things but then there's like the dysregulated like childish more like trauma response side of me that wants to be like are you fucking kidding me like i'm smarter than you motherfucker no i'm kidding it's just ironic again i just think like the stereotypes are often the opposite of what is actually the case and it's not all the same we're all diverse we're all different it's really varied and again nuanced but yeah i just think people should just think a little bit before they like open their mouth and like say what they've been taught by a really problematic culture 